Let's talk about some simple strategies you can use to maintain your health during the holidays. I know it's a fun and festive time of the year, but let's talk about a few strategies that you can use. There's, there's two tensions that I find that most people will wrestle during this time of year. One, they want to stay on track with a good healthy eating plan and healthy lifestyle decisions because they feel good when they do that. But they also don't want to miss out and deprive themselves of you know, going to holiday parties and having a glass of wine or a Christmas cookie or whatever. So let's talk about just a few things that you can do. I always tell people, pick your favorite three events where you want to give yourself a little bit of a looser leash, if you will. And so take a look at all of the invitations that you have, all of the parties, all of the dinners, whatever, and pick three where you're going to allow yourself to cut loose on what you normally do. So for example, if you don't normally eat gluten, but you want to go and have a piece of pie or a glass of wine and a dinner roll or whatever it is, try to keep it manageable, but pick three. If you pick more than three events in a, about a six week period, to me, it, it crosses the line of occasional indulgence into like it's becoming a habit. So that's just the number I've come up with. I've used it with people over the years. It seems to marry that tension between not feeling like you're missing out and not sabotaging everything. So pick your favorite three. And then the other one is to make sure you're doing all of the healthy lifestyle self-care type things that you do to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So for me, that's things like working out. And even if they have to be a little bit shorter workouts or whatever, but keep the consistency. Maybe they're just more intense and, and you shorten them a bit if, if time is tight. Um, for me, that's meditation type breathing exercises, deep breathing um, I, I get in my sauna, that, that's for me, but maybe you have something different. Um, and then cold showers. <laughs> that, that's one of my favorites because that's actually a quick time saver because if I'm in a big hurry, I just crank that sucker on cold and I, my whole shower is cold. And let me tell you, that will speed you up in the morning if you need to get moving. You're not lingering in a cold shower. So um, continue to keep up self-care stuff. Number three, make sure your vitamin D levels are good. I test a lot of vitamin D levels. I look at vitamin D level testing every week, on many times a week on blood tests. And so an optimal range is somewhere between 50 and 80. There's tons of data, tons of research to support that thought. But anyway, most people that I see are low on vitamin D. Most of them are also taking some. So they're just not taking enough or they're not taking a good high quality uh, brand. So he, here's the other thing. Some, some of you listening and watching this will live in places that get a lot of sun year round. So consider me jealous because that's excellent if you get year round good quality sun. Go out in the middle of the day and get some sun. And if it happens to be a nice sunny day in your town, get out there and, and get the sun. Fresh air and sunshine are so good for you, but it's probably not going to be enough to move the needle. You probably will need to supplement too if you don't live at somewhere like Florida or something where you, you can get reliable sunshine year-round to get your vitamin D that way. But it's still really good for you. I don't think it's any coincidence that cold and flu season corresponds with this sugar eat-a-thon that starts with Halloween candy and ends with Christmas cookies and fudge and dropping lower vitamin D levels. So that's just kind of a perfect storm to make you not feel good and to depress your immune system. So um, make sure you do that. And then keep the sugar at bay. This, this is, is another one that it, it kind of goes with that, that first tip that I had about, you know, planning things out and picking a few strategic indulgences. But Really, this this time of the year, it, it just takes a little more intention and focus to say, I'm not going to eat a bunch of sugar because I know what that does to my immune system. I know what how it makes me feel. I know it creates inflammation and, and makes me gain weight and all these things. So just, you know, th that one's not necessarily specific to the holiday season, but you're just going to have to be a little more mindful of it during this crazy and festive time of the year. So those are just a couple of strategies that I've been using myself and I coach people and, and talk to my patients and, and as they go through this journey, they don't want to undo all of the good that they're working so hard to do throughout the year just because they want to have a Christmas cookie. And, and you shouldn't. For, for most people, you can handle 
a Christmas cookie or a glass of wine or a piece of pie. You just can't start on Thanksgiving Day and quit on New Year's morning and go, oh, now I'm going to go on a diet and lose th these 20 pounds I packed on or whatever it is. Just be a little strategic about it. The exception is if you're really battling something and you really are struggling with your health, like you have cancer or, you know, you're full-blown diabetic or something like that, maybe you have to, th this advice needs to be even um, taken down even a little bit. Maybe it's one piece of pie throughout the whole holiday season instead of three. But you see what I'm saying, that the worse your situation, the more strict you're going to have to be. But for most of us, a little bit of loosening up, once in a blue moon, it's going to be okay. We're going to maintain our sanity and our waistline and our health during this season. So thanks for watching and have a great day.